Let's get it. Hello, welcome to the Community Homeworks Workshop tonight. My name is Tiana Harrison and I'm the Education Volunteer Coordinator at Community Homeworks. If you're watching this live, please feel free to comment and let us know where you're tuning in from. Also, if you would like to join us in on the discussion or ask questions, please feel free to put the, that in the comment section as well. If you're watching this after the live broadcast, we still are happy that, to answer your questions. It just may take us a little longer to respond. Community Homeworks is a nonprofit organization with a mission to empower homo dignified homes. We get our fundings from grants, gifts, and donations. So if you find value in this workshop tonight, we encourage you to donate on our website at communityhomeworks.org. Tonight's workshop is a little different. It's entitled, it's a uh, roundtable discussion entitled, How to Sell Your Home. We have uh, some experts here. <laughs> we have Realtor Tawala Lockett Jones from the Lockett Realty, the Lockett Jones Realty Group. We have Home Inspector, Mr. Bob Cheeseman from Brown's Stone Home and Stone Stager, Miss Carol Morgan from Stage Right Home Staging. Welcome to you all. What I would like for you to do is to introduce yourself, tell us the industry you, that you are currently in and why you chose that industry. So anyone may begin. Um, my name is Bob Cheeseman. I'm with Brownstone Home Inspections. Uh, we provide home inspections. Um, for the buyers, uh, I particularly got into it. Uh, I've been in it and decided to uh, kind of wanted to get into this, um, and it's interesting just to see the different houses and, and stuff like that. So it's it's been interesting. Yes, been sir. Fun. I'll go next. I am Twala Lockett Jones. I am a real estate broker here in Kalamazoo, Michigan, born and raised native of Kalamazoo. Um, I got into real estate because I love all things real estate. Um, I love investing in it, it fixing on it, looking at it, touring it, fixing it up. Um, I am passionate about home ownership, uh, especially for people of color. Uh, that is uh, one of my missions is to um, just spread the word about the importance of home ownership. Hello, uh, my name is Carol Morgan. Um, I own Stage Right Home Staging, and my story is a little different. Um, I'm retired, and uh, I have <laughs> 27 years and was retired and wasn't having any fun with that. And um, I decided to take my strong business background and combine it with my love of art and design and started Stage Right Home Staging. I love the real estate industry and it seemed like a perfect match. And now 15 years later, I'm staging homes and having fun and working with people like Twala, <laughs> having a good time. 
Thank you very much for those introductions. So what we're going to do is have a roundtable discussion, and it'll be a little different. We're going to do a little role playing. So I am going to be a homeowner that is looking to sell my home. I'm looking to purchase a new home, and I want to sell my current home. And so I will ask all of you questions like, where do I start? What do I need to do? Um, um, I may ask questions of price point just so that I can get a budget um, for this new scenario. So if you guys are ready, let's, Absolutely. let's yes. jump right in. in. So I am homeowner Harriet, and um, <laughs> I am looking to sell my home. So who should I call first? Call me. Okay. <laughs> so good afternoon. Uh, Miss Tawala Lockett Jones. My name is homeowner Harriet, and I am looking to sell my home, but I don't know where to start. What All should right. I do? Well, Miss Harriet, thank you for calling me. You made the right first step, and that is to find a qualified realtor who can walk you through the steps to home ownership. Okay. Or no, you've already done that part. I, yes, ma'am. To this sell is, your home yes, I am and get you moved into your next home. Okay. Yeah. So the first step that I would do at this point, I would ask you to, um, I would schedule a, a seller's consultation with you. Um, I'll gather a little bit of information about you and your home over the phone, um, but I'll want to sit down in person with you at your home to schedule, I mean, to um, have a conversation about your home, about um, what your plans are as far as moving to your next home. We'll look at things at like what is your timeline uh, for getting into the next home because we need to make all of this work for you as smoothly as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it can be a little tricky when you're moving. You're selling a house. You have to buy a house. It's possible the house you're trying to buy is occupied. So we need all of this to work together. But the very first step, we got to get your home market ready. Okay. Okay. And what does market ready mean? So market ready is going to mean you're going to be real uncomfortable living in that house while it's, <laughs> while it's for sale. No, in a nutshell, market ready means you want your home when buyers walk into it, you want your home to sell itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want it to look fresh and clean and organized. Um, any repairs that are needed. Sometimes we live in a house a certain way and we just we know things need to be done, but there may be deferred maintenance. So you want to make sure that you are tidying up the home, taking care of any um, repairs that need to be done, um, doing work on the interior and exterior. And that's where we all can work together, like a pre-inspection would be a good idea. And then we can refer you over to for pre, that. Pre -listing inspection. And, mm -hmm. and so is it, is that at this point, uh, my realtor that I would need to speak with a home and pre listing pre -listing inspection. inspection. So Mr. Ches Cheeseman, can you please tell me about the pre listing home inspection? It's basically like your normal home inspection that a buyer would we basically go through and look at all your your main components, uh, your furnace, your AC, you know, your, all the HVAC systems. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll look at uh, you know, like up in the go up in the attic and look at the rafters, look at the roof, uh, look at the foundation. Um, just basically look at the main components mm -hmm. to make sure everything is running smooth and, and working. And how far in advance should I call you? Is that something that I should do immediately? Is that a first step with you? Yes. I mean, I would talk to the realtor first. Mm -hmm. And then probably once that's all taken care of, then you would contact a home inspector. To... How long does a home inspection usually take? It depends on the square footage. Um, I don't know. Usually it's about a couple hours. Do I need to be present in order for you to do the home inspection? No. Okay. So it's you, something you, you can be. Um, and we always invite the, the homeowner or the realtor to be with us if they have the time and the schedule. Um, 
that way they can kind of and if you have questions and we do ask kind of maybe towards the end of the inspection to kind of ask them a lot of the questions but um but if you have like major concerns or anything it's helpful if you're there okay but you don't necessarily have to be and so now that i've gotten my pre-listing inspection done should i take that back to my realtor what what do i do with that information that information you'll get a like an inspection report mm -hmm. and then from there you would probably contact uh, whatever needed to be like an HVAC heating cooling company. Okay. So if we found issues with your furnace or the central air conditioning unit, um, you would probably contact a HVAC company. Um, if there's a problem with a roof, you would contact a roofer to get those all taken care of. As the homeowner, am, am I responsible for all of those major appliances before I'm selling them or? That would probably be something that you can negotiate with the buyer. Okay. I mean, if if money's tight, and, you know, a new roof is you know three four thousand dollars, it might be something that you can neg negotiate with the buyer. Okay. And so now that I've gotten, I've contacted my realtor and I've gotten my pre-listing inspection done. Now, what do I need to do? So, as far as the pre-listing inspection, just to kind of. Um, get that inspection report. Um, you and I can have a conversation about, okay, what things on this list do you think um, are things that need to be taken care of prior to me putting the house on the market? Mm -hmm. We want to make the house as move-in ready as possible. Um, the possibility, I mean, if, if your house and a, the house next door are the exact same house and you have furnace issues, and they have a new furnace, it's likely if their your prices are the same, that person's going to buy the other house, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that your house is the best house available in the price point that it's in. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we want to look at that inspection report and look at the things that we feel uh, are some of the major things that need to be done. Okay. And so I have... Um done my pre-listing home inspection because I want it to be move-in ready and I've taken care of the major concerns. Um, and so now that I've taken care of those things, is it time for me to call the home stager yet? Absolutely. So <laughs> we're, we're going to also look at things like if your home is occupied, you've okay. already got furniture in it, you've got your personal items in the house and all of that. Uh, we're going to look at the condition of your walls. Do they need fresh paint? And some of these things will overlap, like the conversations I have with you mm -hmm. could overlap. And um, Miss Carol here, the home stager, we'll invite her in now. Okay. Because a lot of what I tell you at this point, she's going to echo it and then even take it to the next level because she'll see things through um, not only a designer's eyes, mm -hmm. but she'll look at who is our buyer going to be. Okay. You know, and so then we look at designing and um, decorating the house based on who we expect to buy the house. And so then I, I'll let you take over from there. So, um, you know, staging really has is kind of a, a misnomer. And unfortunately, you know, HGTV has kind of pushed us along the way. And, and we, we really are, um, we're marketing people. We're visual marketers. And we kind of help with, selling the whole dream and who's the demographic exactly who's going to buy the house so there's a couple of things prepping a house is something everybody has to do everybody has to have a clean house and i call it being mother-in-law worthy <laughs> so when your mother-in-law comes over you know you want to make sure that house is just sparkly sparkly clean and if you're going to sell your house it should be sparkly clean and i'm talking q-tip clean mm -hmm. you know let's get around that stool so when i walk in the house um and let's pretend the living room is orange. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about that right then. <laughs> I'll talk about it eventually, but I'm not going to talk about it right then. But as I walk up to the house, I like, I never drive around the neighborhood to, I, I, I like to see, are the children playing? Is it an older neighborhood? What am I walking into here? You know, and get a feel of the neighborhood. And uh, when I walk in, I say, what, well, how does this feel? And so I, I know kind of what's going on. And I'll walk into the house. Are the steps starting to crumble? Are there weeds in the flower boxes? Is there mulch out 
in the flower beds. Um, is there are the are the uh, um, exterior light fixtures? Are the is the glass clean? You know, is the mailbox all kind of sad and just droopy? What is that first impression? Because that's the six second sale, quite honestly. People are at the house if they're looking at it because they want to buy it. They're not there just for the heck of it. So it's my responsibility once they get there to have them go, oh, I really like this house. And so we want to keep building on that. So when I walk in, those are the little tiny details that after Twala has been there and after you have been there, we want to make sure that that just builds on that. So I start looking, I start picking very honestly. <laughs> and, you know, does the, does the stair railing need to be repainted? Um, and so I go in and I'm trying to maximize that sale potential. And I try to find out, and if Twala calls me, I'll say, what's the swing on that neighborhood? You know, is it 150 to 175? Can I reverse engineer this and get her up to the 175? you know, the 174.9 or whatever it is. <laughs> um, and so then I'm coming in and HGTV, please throw that out the window because that's not reality. It really isn't. It's not decorating. Um, it's not It's not the, the, the glitz, okay? Oh, it might be a little bit. Um, so I go in and I'm in there to sell usable and perceived square footage, okay? So it is going to be uncomfortable to live in that house. All right, so I look at furniture placement. I look at the eye looks for a place to rest. The brain tells it what to do next. So when people want to sell their house, they also want people to go, oh, this is the cutest house I've ever seen. That's not all, or my, all my friends love my house. Why do I have to change anything? Well, your friends aren't buying your house. You know, so <laughs> we're moving things around. I will recommend paint colors. I will recommend minor repairs. I certainly don't get into HVAC because I don't even know how to spell HVAC. <laughs> so um, we'll walk away certain things that people have to do. And whether they call me in or not, prepping is not staging. Staging is selling usable and perceived square footage. So we'll go in, we'll always give rooms a, pur a purpose. For example, master bedrooms that have desks in them, they're not main bedrooms and offices. They're main bedrooms. So, you know, I always recommend, for example, taking um, the desk out. And while we're talking about paint, I'll say, while you're painting, maybe we could paint the orange living room too. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of, so those are the kinds of things that we talk about. Um, I always leave a list. And it's a basic list. I always leave them picture examples. And I always leave them a color palette to choose from. And I help them back into that. So that's kind of what happens when a, when a stager goes in. The house is vacant. We recommend pieces that com, come in. We do not stage a whole house. It's just a waste of money. Ancillary bedrooms don't need to be staged as long as they're large enough. Okay. So um, I have called, I've contacted my realtor. I've gotten a pre-listing inspection. I've contacted the home stager and have gotten a um, prep work mm -hmm. to make my home mother in law worthy. Now that I've done those three components, how long in regards to time am I looking at? Is this something that I'm doing in six months? Is this something that's going to take me a year to do? How long does it normally take? So that part is going to depend a lot on you and your timeline. Uh, some people like to call me a year in advance, like next year I'm going to be selling my house and I just wanted you to come over, take a look at it, let me know what repairs are needed, uh, what should I do to help it to sell better, and then they take their sweet time over that time getting it ready for the market and call me a year later like I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Um, if you, time is of the essence for you and you need it sold in the next couple of months, you're going to be a lot busier getting it prepped and getting it ready. Mm -hmm. um, and then just to back up at that very first meeting with me, um, we're also going to talk about things. Um, the first thing, the very first thing that's important for me to find out is if the person I'm sitting down with has the right to sell the house. 
So that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> so Tell, can we talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. What does that mean exactly? So what that means is uh, depending on the day that we sit down together, the very first conversation mission to do a title search on your house. Mm -hmm. I'm going to contact the title company and they're going to run what they call a title search mm -hmm. where they basically go into the public records and they do, it's like a background check on your title. Okay. They want to look for any liens that are on the house. Um, who's all listed as uh, people that have interest in the home. Mm -hmm. Um, there could be IRS liens that are placed on the home. There could be contractor liens placed on a home. Um, so we was, we just want to know what that title looks like, what mortgages are out there. Um, is your name on there as the owner? Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes I don't have that report back before I sit down with you, but that is something that you and I discuss. You mm -hmm. know, is there anybody else um, on this you know, that needs to make this decision with you. Hmm. Um, there could be a situation where you're divorced, but, and you got the house in a judgment, but the, your ex husband never gave you, um, never gave you a deed, a quick claim deed to take his name off. So we got to address that, mm -hmm. you know, and it is possible. I've worked through all kinds of title situations and liens and IRS liens even. So it is possible uh, but we need to know those things up front mm -hmm. because the last thing we want to do is list your house, get an offer, and then find out there's a lien and it's going to take us three months to get this one cleared off. Or or there's some other issue and it's just going to take time to get it cleared off. We want to know all of that up front mm -hmm. so that we can start uh, working on getting those things clear. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know I come across this situation a lot with estate properties where the um, just say the the mother passed away a while ago and the children just kept living in the house and now they want to sell it and it hasn't the estate has not gone through probate mm -hmm. that could hold up a sale for a year or more while they work through the probate court system. Mm -hmm. And th those things do happen. So that's very important that we do that title search and get that information back as soon as possible so that we know that we're sitting down with the person who can make the decisions to sell the house. So now I have a question, Mr. Cheeseman. Mr. Cheeseman, I have a question. When I get, um, after I've gotten the pre-inspection listing report, and I get ready to do the repairs, what happens if I run into a situation that I've hired a contractor to do the work and they haven't finished the work in time for me to list the sale or to list the home? Do I need another inspection or can I, can I sell the home with the projects partly done as long as I tell them that these things are happening? Like how much weight does that inspection report hold? I guess is what I'm saying. But that would also there again be with the realtor of, you know, do you need more time to get everything completed? Okay. So and when I'm so another question that I have, when I'm taking the, the report that you gave me, how long should I plan to do those projects? Like how long do those projects normally take? that would be kind of hard to, I mean, there's so many variables. I mean, obviously if you're, if you need a roofer, where are they scheduled? You know, are, are they scheduled two weeks out or three weeks out or, you know, um, you would have to just kind of make all those calls. You know, if, if you needed a, a heating and cooling company, you'd have to get them where, where they're at, how soon they can get out there, you know, a roofer, how soon they would get out there. And you'd have to take all that information, how long it would take them, to, to come are there projects that you would recommend starting first are there bigger projects that need more attention like you keep mentioning a roof is that where i would start making sure that my roof was solid and sound i probably would yeah mm -hmm. because obviously if you have a bad roof or you got leaks that's going to cause more damage on the inside so then then you have more repairs to do on the inside 
Now, so, you, I know that there's a pre-inspection. Is there also a post-inspection when I get ready to sell my home, or do I just need one inspection from you? Um, that would be up to the buyer. So normally the buyer contacts the home inspector um, to inspect the home that they want to buy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've had a pre-listing inspection, um, you could use that um, in your negotiations with the buyer. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, this is what we had. These, all these repairs completed. You know, here's the... You know, like the receipts or whatever from the roofer and the HVAC person. Um, and then the buyer can determine whether, you know, if they feel comfortable with, with uh, um, all your, you know, your information that everything was completed. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, they could either say, okay, well, we're good with that. We're not going to have a home inspection done. Um, but you wouldn't need to do anything. As the seller, as I, only, seller, I only need to do one the pre inspection. Yeah, the pre-listing inspection. Okay. And so um, I have gotten my pre-listing inspection. I've gotten the repairs done. Do I need to call Miss Carol back to come and take a look at the things that I've done in regards to seller ready? <laughs> well, if, if we have had that discussion, typically, no, you could call me as many times as you like, mm -hmm. but it's a pretty comprehensive walkthrough, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, it's my responsibility to make sure what I give you is indeed doable. Okay. And so it depends on the seller. You know, if, if you're 90 years old, you might not be able to get it all done. And um, I'll have the conversation and say, are you going to be, do you have help? Are you going to be able to do this? I, I probably have already had a conversation with Twala. She may have said to me, you know what? He's 90 years old. He's alone you know, see what, you know, you can do. He, his daughter-in-law is coming down on Saturday and the list I give may be the best that they can do, mm -hmm. you know? So that's my responsibility as well, because the world's an imperfect place. And so we have to just do the best we can do. Mm -hmm. um, and that daughter-in-law may call me and say, okay, Carol, we, we packed away all the personal photographs. Um, the house is clean. I hired a cleaner they may go through what they were able to do. And Twala said, you know what, we're, we're as good as we're going to get and we're going to list. Um, and the price, price is going to reflect that. Mm -hmm. So that's my responsibility. So I just back into that. I reverse engineer what, what would be perfection. Um, and what I tell people is, you know what, we're going to prepack. We're going to start with prepacking. Prepacking and, and minor repairs. What is prepacking? Well, you're, you're going to move. Mm -hmm. So just pack up the things that you don't need, you know, start with seasonal, start with personal photographs. Um, if you're in the middle of the summer, you don't need your, your, you know, your Christmas trays and you don't need your Christmas decorations. So let's get them all packed up and out of sight and, and in the stored in the basement and the furthest point away from the point of entry. Mm -hmm. I tell people just get them away, <laughs> away from the stairs. Um, and so, you know, that's what we try to do. Just declutter as much as we can get the doilies gone. You know, if you've got doilies, just, t just get rid of them. Um, we have to have magazine quality photographs, mm -hmm. you know, so positioning is something we can do positioning of the furniture. Um, there's a, a misunderstanding that if a stager comes in, I have to take my furniture out and bring furniture in. Not always, you know, it, we have to just be the best we can be. Um, and so that's what my responsibility is. Typically I do not come back in. I would, mm -hmm. or the homeowner can take photographs and send those to me. Twala has gone in before and been taken a photograph. What do you think of this? We've zoomed, we've, we've done FaceTime. Um, there's all sorts of things we can do to make sure we have the best product that we can produce. Okay. So if I am living in my home <laughs> and I'm living in my home with children, mm -hmm what would be the most effective way for me to maximize the space that we are able to live in? I know that you said packing things up seasonally mm -hmm. to put them in the basement, probably packing up toys and things that they're not using, but how much do we get to live in the house until it's sold? You live in it every, every day, just like you always live. And when you're going to have a showing, what I tell my clients is get a couple of inexpensive laundry baskets from the dollar store. Mm -hmm. Twala calls and says, okay, we're going to have a showing at 530. You and the kids make a game of it. You put everything in the laundry basket, throw them in the trunk of the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm dead She's serious. serious. <laughs> and then you guys leave. And then, you know, like as if it's magic, 
you guys come back and all the toys come back out again. Mm -hmm. My daughter did it with 15 month old twins. Okay. That's how we did it. So. Okay. So or sometimes if the couch, this is a riot. Sometimes if the couch is in the corner on an angle, you just throw it all behind the couch. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight. That's, that's the thing. Out that's, of the, sight. that's the thing. You know, out of sight. And, and people will say, well, what about the changing table? All right. Somebody knows you have children and they probably have children. That's why they're looking at your house. It's a, it's a family house, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's some things that there's grace, you know, we have to give people grace. So we also have to look at the impact rooms. Those are the ones that we want to, you know, like the dining room, the kitchen, the main bedroom, the great room or, or the living room, you know, children's room. Rooms I, um, always take the children's names off the walls. You don't want people knowing your children's names. You just don't. It we looks like. Um, but you're going to need to repeat the question because I'm not white. Okay. It's how much does each of these services cost? Okay. We have a question from the audience, and that is, how much do each of these services cost? So, Mr. Ch Cheeseman, what would it cost me to get a pre-listing inspection done? Um, there again, it's based on um, the, the square footage of the home. But usually a normal home inspection would cost anywhere from three to three hundred and fifty dollars for your basic fifteen hundred square foot home. And then it kind of goes up from there. Okay. Um, how much is it going to cost me for a consultation to list my home? So the consultation for me to come out and sit with you, walk through the home, that's all free. Mm -hmm. We don't have a charge for that. Uh, the way I make money as a realtor is when your house sells, I get what we call a commission. Mm -hmm. um, so that is built into the sale price of the home. Nothing comes out of your pocket to me um, until your home sells. Okay. 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 You front, mm -hmm. um, you would pay Carol for her staging services up front but you don't pay me until the home sells and we're at the closing table. And Ms. Carol, how much is a staging service gonna cost me? Okay. A staging consultation, if you go with Ms. Twala, um, if a realtor brings me in, it's $175, which is a discounted rate. Mm -hmm. um, if you call me up front, it's 190 to 250, depending on whether or not you want a written report. Mm -hmm. um, the actual stage, Aging services, if I were to bring in accessories, ba is based on the house. Mm -hmm. So it, it's hard for me to say how much it would be without seeing the home. Um, it could go anywhere from $600 to thousands. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've staged 12,000 square foot homes, and that was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Semi loads of furniture. Okay. Any more questions from our audience? Well, those audience members that are looking and, and watching us, please make sure you feel free to put your questions in the chat. So, Ms. Tawala Lockett-Jones, I have listed my home to sell, and I have staged my home. I've gotten rid of the things that I need. I've gotten my inspection. My home is ready to sell. And is there anything else that I need to do in the process? So, do a walkthrough. We would have already signed a listing agreement, okay? but we may have not given a price. I would have done comps for you to tell you what other homes in your neighborhood that are similar, similar to yours are selling for. Mm -hmm. That's called a comparative market analysis. So we would do that to kind of see what the range is of homes that sell in your neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Um, when I come back through the house, you've finished all the repairs, you've got it staged, it's looking good, it's market ready, like ready to be listed. Um, you and I are going to talk about, okay, where do we think this needs to be priced? Mm -hmm. And we do that based on market data. Mm -hmm. It's not a price that's my opinion. It's something that the numbers are telling us that, you know, the market is saying this is what your house needs to be listed for. Mm -hmm. And then we agree on that as a list price. And we put it on the market. Putting it on the market simply means that you signed a listing contract with me. That's usually going to be for me. I do them for a six month period of time. Uh, we have the address of the property, the property on there. 
we have the terms of uh, how much the commission uh, you will pay uh, to me once the house sells. Um, there's a lot of language in the contract. It's about uh, four pages of paragraphs of, of language that lets you know what this uh, relationship uh, means that you and I are getting ready to enter into. Mm -hmm. Once we find out the list price of the house, I go on what we call the MLS, the multiple listing service, and I input all the data for your house in there. We get the photographer. So we have a professional photographer come and um, work their magic. So they come in and they photograph your home. They go to every room of your home and photograph it. Uh, we use those photos when we put in your house on the market. Uh, we add those photos into the listing. Mm -hmm. So once your house is live on the market, someone clicks on it. I'm sure you've been on the MLS and Zillow and mm -hmm. Trulia and mm -hmm. Redfin and Realtor.com. So any place that your home is listed, you click on there, you all the information about that home. Mm -hmm. So that's what everybody will see. Um, I order a sign for your front, front yard. The sign will have my company name on it, my phone number. That goes in the front yard um, at the time of listing. Mm -hmm. So as people drive by, they see that your home is for sale. Okay. Okay. So we do all kinds of different things to market your home, uh, including social media, which is one of the, the biggest ways to get the information about your home out to the public. So your home is hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people. Okay. Miss Carol, is there anything um, particular that I need to do in my backyard with lawn furniture and things of that nature if I have it when I'm staging a home? Well, we're, we're selling how to live in a space. Okay. So your backyard, how, how am I going to live there? And that, that, that's probably one of the best questions because um, let's just take winter. If you have a patio or a deck, sense because you're not sitting out there in your lawn furniture, mm -hmm. but you should shovel it because when you don't and the snow builds up, it makes the inside darker and it makes it look smaller. Mm. So if you're selling a deck and a patio, a lifestyle, it should be shoveled off. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's in the, the spring or the summer or the fall and it makes seasonally sense and you have a fire pit, there should be seating around it. You should have furniture outside. Okay. You should always set the furniture off to the side so it doesn't block the view out the back and it doesn't block the view of the slider or the window. No different than the inside of your house because you're selling space, you're selling lifestyle, you're selling use. Remember, usable and perceived square footage. And so all of that should be staged because that's how you want to live. Mm -hmm. um, but I did want to mention something as well, and there are statistics to prove this. Um, if you go on the National Association of Realtors website, houses that are properly prepared, staged and prepped will sell. And, and on the National Association website, there's numbers out there that says 17% more that houses are, that are not prepared properly than the market a year ago. <laughs> I have not seen 17%. But I have seen 8 to 10% higher with properties that are properly prepared than pro properties that are not. Mm -hmm. So your elbow grease and your following the very basic steps of properly preparing your home, taking care of minor um, repairs, uh, cleanliness, taking care of personal photos, because they are a distraction, um, just usable and perceived square footage taking the time to do that. And it's a very subliminal message that you're sending. Um, it's not decorating. Those houses will sell for more money. It's just, it's just a fact. It's not Carol Morgan. Carol Morgan doesn't get any more money, <laughs> <laughs> but it, they, they do sell for more money. So it is worth the time that you take it and the investment you make. I Absolutely. Thought what she said. Um, Absolutely. The more that you do to prepare your house, the, the smart things that I've told you to do, Carol's told you to do, and the things that we find out during that pre-listing inspection, um, you're going to sell your home faster 
and for more money. What I find a lot of times, I'll have a seller who doesn't want to do anything. And they'll say things like, well, just we'll just let the buyer take care of that. Maybe they have the orange living room walls and they're like, well, the buyer's probably probably going to come and just pick their own paint colors anyway. That's not the point. The buyer, when they walk in and they see things undone, what they're going to do is say, oh, they're asking 150, but I got to paint the house about $3,000. So maybe I'll offer them 147 because I got to paint the house. Or look at this carpet where the seller might have said, well, I'm just going to leave that carpet down there and then the buyer can change it or whatever. That buyer is going to come in and start picking your price apart. Mm -hmm. And even if the house is worth 150 in the condition it's in and you've already felt like I discounted it to 150 because it needs this, this and this, mm -hmm. the buyer is going to walk in and, and discount it further because they see you want 150 but I got to do this, this, and this. So to me, I'm going to offer you 140, mm -hmm. you know? So you want to do all those, those little things that seem ridiculous to you at the time. Um, but I guarantee you, if you do those little things, let's say if you don't do those little things, a buyer, when they walk in your house, they don't walk in it like they walk in the house where they live. <laughs> <laughs> they walk in your house expecting perfection. Even if they live a different way and their, their doors are dirty and they got fingerprints all over the light switches, when they walk in your house, they expect your light switches to be cleaned off, wiped down the walls, clean, you know, sparkly, you know, clean. So they, their perception of what your, what your house should look like mm -hmm. is completely different than how they probably live day to day. Mm hmm but because mm -hmm. they're getting ready to make an investment in your house, they want it to be as close to perfection as possible. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, they will come in and start picking, picking things apart. Even the globes on the lights, taking those down, your ceiling fans, dusting those, cleaning those, you know, washing the globes and putting them back up. It makes the whole house look brighter if a person never washes their globes and all of a sudden they wash them. The bathroom vent fan. I look at a lot of those and they've got all kinds of lint and dust and, you know, mm -hmm. black stuff all over them. People never take them down and clean them. So it's those types of small things that you can do that sometimes they cost nothing to do. But people don't do them care of that. What would you say is the top thing that you would tell sellers to do that that they seem to sometimes overlook the smallest thing, but it's really a big deal. Probably like nail holes and walls, you know, when they start taking their pictures down, um, I've seen some pretty big holes. <laughs> People put like big nails in the wall in walls just to hold this little picture. But, um, yeah, probably like nail holes. Okay. Um, they're like Carol, you know, baseboard trim, wipe it up. All that, you know, all that stuff. Repairs, yeah. I mean, nail holes. Nail holes. Um, yeah. That's a little big I mean, thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stains in carpet. Mm -hmm. You know, have the carpet shampooed. Smells, smells, yeah. odors. Mm -hmm. That's a big, a big deal. Especially if they have pets. <laughs> yeah, pets, cigarette smoke. Yeah. Um, that drops the value of your house like a rock. Mm. If people walk in and they smell a cat smell mm -hmm. or a cigarette smoke smell, um, it definitely affects the value of the house. And light bulbs. People don't change light. They do. They're all different colors. Yeah. If you're going to go with LED bright, do them all the daylight. Don't have some soft, warm light and some daylight bulbs because they don't match. And that catches people's eye right away. I go in bathrooms that have the light bars and they'll have like a soft warm bulb and then a, a daylight bulb and then they have the little squiggly bulb and it's got like four different types of bulbs in the, in the mm -hmm. light bar mm -hmm. and things like that. You don't think about it when you're living in it. I think about it because I'm conscious of it 
But the average person, the light bulb goes out and you go in a drawer and you find another one. Yeah, that's very important that all the lighting, the, the, the hue of the lighting match. Okay. Yeah. Miss Carol, what is your one little big thing? <laughs> they just named them all. Um, <laughs> it, 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 the, the personal photographs that are all over the house. Okay. And those just really have to be gone. And I'll, it's not for the reason that everybody thinks. Everybody thinks it's because um, it's, it's too personal. It's distracting. People only spend about eight seconds, don't you think, 12, 8 to 12 seconds in a room? And if they're looking at your cute grandkids, they're not looking at the space. Mm -hmm. And then they and then they go home and they go, how big was that living room? Mm. Do you remember what color it was? And they have forgotten your house. Okay. The longer they spend in a room, for the right reason, the longer they spend in a room, the more likely you are to make a short list. This is about psych psychology, the psychology of selling. And you want them to stay in the house as long as possible. Okay. And for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And so um, personal photographs, because they're all over and nobody ever hangs them. And then when they take them down, they should fill the holes. Okay. Absolutely fill the holes. Okay. Um, are there any other quick tips that you guys wanted to leave with our audience? One thing you taught me recently was you know how you go in the house and you see blessed and you see these oh, yes. things Word on the art. wall and all the words all over the place. Mm -hmm. You recently told me, that, tell people take that stuff down. And it was for that same reason. If people are in there reading your scriptures on the wall and your affirmations and mm -hmm. all of that, they're not looking at your space. Okay. They're looking at all of the word art all over the the house not up because I was one of those that really liked the little signs and, and mm -hmm. this and that all through the house but after you told me that it's like oh that makes a lot of sense you know yeah we are selling space we are selling, we are space. selling usable square footage yes we are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and we're, we want really great marketable photographs mm -hmm. and you know the, the camera lens loves that stuff on the wall. Mm -hmm. They love it. And so sometimes when I'm kind of bored and I'll scroll, are the homes that you see listed where there's definitely a lived in look? What is that? Where, where you go in and, and there's just clutter and all of those things. Is that the photographer or is that the, the realtor not giving a heads up or is that the seller not really that could be a number of things it could be a seller who no matter what you advise um they are not going to do okay what you ask them to do okay um it could be a situation where the home is a um like renter occupied okay so um it could be an uncooperative renter that's occupying the home um, and so they don't really have a stake in the house selling, you know, it's probably to their detriment if it sells. Okay. Um, so they don't really have them cooperate. And in those cases, I do tell my investors who want to sell property that's occupied by tenants, bribe the tenants, you know, it, when the, it, when they come for showings, if the house is nice and clean, I'll give you this, or when it sells, I'll give you this or that, or, you know, that's a bribery is okay in this situation. All right. So, <laughs> we say incentive. Incentivize, <laughs> incentivize um, the tenants, but seriously, um, the photographer is there to photograph the house. Okay. They are not home stagers. They are not deep cleaners or, you know, um, house cleaners or anything like that. When they get there, they expect the house to be ready to be photographed because mm -hmm. that's what they were hired for. Okay. So you have to make sure that that house is ready. Um, as a realtor, I like to be there with the photographer because I will run around and, oh, let, hold on, let me get all of this off the kitchen counter. Let me put this stuff, you know, 
away right now. Mm -hmm. There's times where I'll go in and rearrange a person's whole living room for the photograph mm -hmm. and then put it all back <laughs> the way they had it. Mm -hmm. um, when I leave, because you do those photographs, definitely. That's like the first impression that a buyer is going to get to that house is when they pull it up online and they see that those pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I'll have homeowners say to me, I didn't have any showings. Well, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> well, we are um, coming to the close of what has been a very informative hour. I wanted to give you guys a few minutes just to give any closing uh, suggestions or closing information that you wanted to give. Also wanted to remind our viewers where they could utilize your services if they ever needed that um, as well. So anyone can go first. Okay. Well, I just have a quick list <laughs> that I'll, I'll just pick and choose a few things off of it because I don't want to take a whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. Again, my name is Twala Lockett Jones, Lockett Jones Realty Group. And before, before I forget it, I have Princess Mackie Buys a House. Um, this book <laughs> is uh, great for first time home buyers and their children. It's a children's book, but it's written um, for anyone that wants to learn the steps to buying their first home so that then you can be in a position to become a first time home seller. OK, so um, in the interior, we want to make sure we're cleaning every room, removing all clutter. I wish there was a prettier word for declutter, but there isn't one. It's just it is what it is. This De remove items from the kitchen counters. You want your counters as clean as possible, even the stuff that you use daily. Uh, when people come to see your house, it's all about that usable square footage. They want to see that they have counter space in the kitchen. So when they're cooking, so you might want to remove the toaster, remove the toaster oven, the coffee maker, just things that take up space on the countertops. Um, removing the personal photos. Um, check leaks, uh, repairing holes or damage to the plaster from pictures and uh, things that you've had hanging on the walls. The exterior curb appeal matters. When people pull up to your house, you want the, that house to say, come in. You want that house to beckon them in. So just being aware of how you're keeping the lawn, um, keeping the... Um, the walkways clear, the porch clean, uh, trimming trees, and uh, uh, those are my, my little quick tips. So thank you. Um, well, again, Carol Morgan, Stage Right Home Staging, um, and Light and Bright Cells. That, that's, that was my tip, um, clean. If, if you'd rather not bring um, a professional in, then to Twala's point, um, we're selling usable and perceived square footage. You're moving anyway, so pack up the, the bulk, okay? Pack up the things you're not using. Pack up your seasonal items. Closet's half full. Cupboard's half full. You want to know how to make your cupboards half full? Take out your coffee mugs and your everybody does. That's true. I'm telling you, everybody does. Everybody's laughing. They're going to go home and do it right now. Um, so those are the things. And a quick tip on how to, to, to fix the nail holes in your wall without doing a whole bunch of little painting all over, because they're going to look like mayflies in the light. <laughs> Take the, 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 um, oh, spackle. What's spackle. Thank you. The spackle, put it on your finger, stick it in there, wait, buff it up. Take your paint, put it on your finger, dab it. It's gone. It's fixed. Okay, that's how you do it. Okay. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> uh, Bob Cheesen with Brownstone Home Inspections. Um, I, I guess I would say I know money's tight, but, you know, I, I kind of hear in the grapevines here and there about you know, people waiving inspections. Um but I've also heard some horror stories where, you know, they've waived the inspection and then they end up spending 10, 13, you know, $14,000 on a new roof or something that the home inspection would have caught. So um, make sure you hire a qualified home inspector. Um, 
make sure they're certified. So yeah, that's basically all I have. Though that is more that is again to thank you guys for joining me this evening this has been really really fun and informative if we do it again in the spring i hope that you will consider joining us again in the springtime um, if you have any questions to the audience please make sure that you put it right in the chat so that we can uh, answer those questions for you and i will see you guys all next tuesday <laughs>